This project we have here that we're going to get started on is just a cute little side table. And you can tell how abused and nicked up and scratched up and stain marks the top is. Plus all of the legs are loose up here even though they do have corner blocking. Everything's loose, every single leg. And then on top of that we have cracks in the wood where it's supposed to be mounted to the legs. And this one is entirely totally broken and even though it was attempted to have been fixed that wasn't really a resolve so we're going to start just by taking this entire table apart hi my name is packy creator of pack rats shack i upcycle furniture build out of pallet wood finish interior spaces and have a vendor booth for my creations welcome to my world These pieces are going to be totally replaced and I'm going to use straight pieces so that we can get rid of this uh, carving that's kind of old fashioned. This actually did have a dowel in it. None of the other pieces do. Seems like the corner of the block that's into the table is strong, or into the lakes were strong. This one's going to have to be replaced. So even though the glue is strong, I'm going to have to break that off. I hate flathead. I hate flathead screws. So we are going to have to see if we can get that off. So these are all the pieces that we need to rebuild and we'll go ahead and start cleaning these pieces up. Making sure there's no clumps of glue stuck in places they don't need to be. Thank you. 
Okay, I think I have a 180 on there and that's not touching it. I'm going to start with an 80 and then move up to a 120 and then maybe get back to something a little finer. So, some of these are so deep, it looks like it was hit with some kind of tool or something. It's like someone wasn't going to even attempt to worry about it, so I'm going to go ahead and fill it. I was going to try to sand this down smooth. This goes right in my eyes, I tell ya. Pushes up my bottom eye into the anyway there's there's no way we're going to stand down that deep so I'm just going to go ahead and fill it So I'll let that dry and then I'll be back to sand it all down. Actually while this is drying we're going to go ahead and figure out what we need here, which this one won't be that difficult to figure out. So here we have our two pieces. It's going to make a perfect T-brace for the bottom of the legs of the table. 
And since we're going to use a crake jig and have the uh, screws anchored in correctly, we're not going to worry about drilling holes to put in a dowel rod to um, clamp and glue into place. We're just going to use the crake jig and if we need to we can fill in the uh, nail holes if we want to and then sand them back so everything can be um, painted and level and no screw holes showing. We can do that if we want. Here we're going to do a, a new corner block which all I did was find a scrap piece of wood I had in the right dimension and then I made a line. So here this will be our new corner block and I'm going to cut that and throw all of the rest of these pieces we're not going to use anymore in the burn pile. So it's too tacky yet to sand down. I'm going to let this set for a little while longer and then come back finish sanding it starting with the 80 move into 120 and then move in maybe to 180 or 220 and at the same time we're going to sand these off to get uh, the rough edges a little smoothed out. Probably go ahead and with the uh, with the DeWalt sander get these flat sections of the legs and then come back and scuff sand the rest of the spindles with like either just a used disc that can wrap around really well or a sanding pad. So that's what we'll do next. Where I eyeballed it the first time is too shallow. But to put it all the way down to the bottom of the base here just seems way too high. So I think I need to split the difference. So how about we put that under there? just right.
Okay, so now we're to the point of painting this piece. I've went ahead and filled all the nail holes or screw pocket screw holes and sanded them back. I think there's a little corner there that's not quite flat enough. This will get in the corner better than that. Now it's all sanded back the way I want it. And of course, everything washed down again and we're ready to paint. I hope I'm not boring all of you with the fact that I am painting this piece with my Krylon Chalky Finish Tricorn Black. But the reason being is if you watched Slice episode one, you'll remember these chairs that I had a friendly competition with my neighbor vendor, who I buy my chalk paints from. So if you remember Sliced, you'll re recognize this chair. So there was one lonely chair left after that. We had done two of them and there was a third one. And this uh, harp was all split apart like in layers. There's like five different layers. It all had to be glued and clamped. And I went ahead and I finished it the same as the other chair as far as color orientation because the chairs were bought the day of the episode, but they were bought by someone who just wanted to support the cause. They didn't actually want to take them home and keep them. So they donated them back to the store for us to sell again. So I have fabric that matches the colors of the other seat and I thought that this little table is a perfect size it would work to be a three-piece set this the other chair that I did in that episode and this table so I'm planning on painting this table black and doing a little bit of gold embellishment to it just so that the pieces all look good together. Even though the seat is slightly different fabric, they match and they combine really, really well. So I'm going to price them all individually. You don't, somebody who is interested in a piece or not the whole set, they could buy individual pieces, but I just wanted something to coordinate all together. So if the possibility was that it would make a nice little seating spot anyways, that's why I'm going with tricorn black again. So I apologize if I'm boring you with all the black. We're gonna go ahead and get started in the upside down position because that's how I do that. I like to get in all of these nooks and crannies first before flipping the piece upright whenever possible. And if you didn't watch Sliced Episode 1, you might want to. It's kind of funny. There's some fun bits here and there. And again, also another reason to go with blacks is so that you don't have the bleed through. This is a red wood that has lots of bleed through. And chalky paints are said you don't have to prime, but when you have bleed through, that kind of changes the scenario. So you don't need to prime based on stickability, but you do need to prime in certain scenarios based on bleed through, if that makes sense.
I get a little over here where I couldn't see it from the other angle. Yep, all these top sh little shelves. You all gotta get done. Stay in the back. Oops, getting too close. Not giving you much room, am I? We probably need to find a new place for you before you end up wiping yourself on some wet paint. So far you've managed to miss the wet spots. Come on down. There you go. Good girl. Trying to overfill it but it just keeps going back in. There I think. Now I need to see where the other hole was. I wish I would have remembered that I had to do that. It's such a small piece that I'm going to walk away and let that dry because there's no way it'll be completely dry, especially with how deep that went in by the time I would work around to it. So we're going to not get started on painted right, painting right now. We're just going to wait for that to dry. We want to just sand these areas flat and I have to get a little coarser some paper let me see I don't know what this is it feels like it's about to a uh, 200 to 300 by now it's been worn out so much but it's not quite getting there so This is probably about a 120 by now. And that seems to be enough. It's time to do a second coat. I think I will go ahead and do under here again.
do a close up so you can see. That's how splotchy it is. See how that looks when that dries. So everything looks good, nice and dry with this. Um, everything's solid coverage. We're going to go ahead and do a sealant coat using Minwax water-based polycrylic. And we're just, I've already actually started to do one coat on the legs so that we can get all around the spindles. And I usually typically like to do about three coats. So I'm going to go ahead and get started on a second coat. So we'll let that dry and then I'll do a third coat and we'll call that done. And then I'm going to come back in after the polycrylic's been um, dried long enough that um, you can touch it, which I think that should be. This dries to the touch fairly quick, but says 30 minutes between coats and can be handled after one hour. So after I'm done with the third coat and then another hour after that, I'm going to um, come in with this uh, gold gilding wax so that it'll match the um, chairs and the harp design where the gold embellishment was brought out in the chairs.
Hi everybody, it's Nova. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you liked it, make sure to give it a big thumbs up. Comment down below and let us know any thoughts you have on this project. Also, guys, super exciting news. We are monetized. Thank you guys so much for giving us this opportunity to share our stories and passions with you. We really appreciate the support. We really adore that you guys are liking and commenting and subscribing to us. We never in a million years thought that we'd get so many followers so quickly. So thank you so much. And that said, stay safe out there.